You asked for more, and you're gonna get some more. Welcome back to What If The Freedom Fighters Were Canon, Part 2. This is a What If series where we've been exploring the idea of the old Sat-AM cartoons storyline and characters being part of the Sonic games as early as Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Last time we saw Sonic encountering Chuck and Tails for the first time in Emerald Hill Zone after it was already under occupation by Dr. Robotnik's forces. And he ended this with a quest to go to Chemical Plant Zone using a brand new power ring developed by Chuck to try and destroy some of the critical infrastructure and delay Robotnik's expansion while they try to find people to work together and overthrow the occupation. How will it go? It's time to find out. The Chemical Plant Zone is pumping away, manufacturing Robotnik's future forces. It spews toxic material into the environment, into the sky. All of this destruction for an evil cause. Which is exactly why Sonic now tears through its metallic surface, buzz-soaring badniks and breaking down electronics as he heads towards the billowing smoke of a newly constructed and still expanding facility. All the whilst taking note on how similar this reminds him of his time in Scrap Brain Zone. Certainly the work of Robotnik, alright. At the same time, a group of freedom fighters are crawling their way through the inner pipe works of the chemical plant with their own mission headed for the same critical piece of infrastructure and with a collection of timed explosives along with them. Unlike Sonic, the robots on station here pose them a serious threat. They have to use the element of stealth and surprise and they would prefer not to fight at all. Unfortunately, their preference is ignored when the security alarm detects movement and sends a bunch of robots round to hunt them down. Rota ducks for cover as some laser balls shoot over his head. They do not have the correct weaponry to fight them at range. However, one of the compatriots, Bunny, has an extendable metallic arm and she uses it to grab one of the robots and swing them into the others, giving them a chance to escape. As they round a corner and use Nicole to hack a security door open, another robot was there waiting for them. And in a panic, Antoine swats the machine, knocking its sensors backwards, allowing the rest of the team to kick it over. But he swatted it with the detonator controls for the bombs. It sparks in his hand and is clearly malfunctioned. Oh, Antoine, what are you going to do that for? Now how are we going to blow this facility? I, it, I don't know how it was happened. I was just, it. Uh, Calm down, Antoine. Maybe I can still piece it together. We don't have time to repair it, Rota. We're going to need to hotwire these bombs. But Sally, that's going to require a manual detonation. We'll just have to be quick, then, won't we? Come on, help me with this. The rest of you cover our backs. Right behind you, Sal. Sally and Rota open up the packaging of their explosives and cut some of the wires, binding them together, allowing them to be triggered quickly, manually, but it will be a risky detonation, for whoever throws the bomb will likely be caught in the blast radius. Nonetheless, with their new improvised plan, they resume their hunt for the generator. Sonic is still doing his thing, cutting through all the machines like Swiss cheese and he's almost at the facility. Bunny asks who's going to throw the bombs, to which Sally volunteers herself, and when the others object, she counters, saying it was her plan and her idea, so she's the one that must take the risk. She orders the rest of the Freedom Fighters to wait here to make sure no one comes up behind her and be ready to move once she comes back. She runs off to get to a better position to throw. However, her team are encountered by a SWAT bot. Priority 1 detected. Freedom fighters. Apprehending now. Oh, bother. And that should do it. Nicole, where should I place the bomb? A few paces to the right, Sally. Make sure to run. I know that much, Nicole. Okay, here goes nothing. 
Sally collects her bag of explosives and moves to the point Nicole advised. But she hears some clunking behind her. Guys? Unfortunately, it wasn't her friends. She's taken, just like the rest of the Freedom Fighters, and they find themselves on their knees, surrounded by robots, in front of the mastermind of this chemical plant zone. None other than Snivelly Robotnik. <laughs> Robotnik is going to be so pleased with me once I deliver the Freedom Fighters. You thought you could pull one over old Snively, did you? Well, looks like you're not as smart as you think. <laughs> oh, can it, Snively? Oh, no. No, no, I think it'll be you who'll be canning it it's rather soon. Oh, I just can't wait to see what you look like coated in metal. Now, don't think I wasn't aware of what your little plan was. Hand over your detonator, and maybe I'll go easy on you. The Freedom Fighters do not have the ability to reply even if they wanted to, because Antoine broke the detonator. The bombs do not have a method of cancellation. Sively doesn't believe them, and so he pulls Antoine aside and starts to slowly pick out his hair. One strand at a time. Oh, how? Oh, my head! Better start talking, otherwise I'll be able to make my own toupee out of his hair. Antoine's screams of agony carry throughout the chemical plant, pricking Sonic's ears, and he runs over to the sound. A blue gust of wind blows over this collection of individuals, and suddenly all the robots around them have been destroyed and standing amongst the destroyed scrap is a blue hedgehog, spinning a large golden ring on the tip of his finger. Well, what do we have here? <laughs> what? The Freedom Fighters are also shocked, mouths hanging open as this stranger completely destroyed Snively's guard force, all in seemingly a second. Sonic's my name, speeds my game. Now, and he flicks the ring and grabs it solidly in his hand. Why don't you tell me what's going on around here? I don't need to talk. Ah, never mind. Don't care. And Sonic speeds past Snively to the giant generator's base. A, a command console flashes many colors indicating its function, which Sonic doesn't understand. So this is the ticket, eh? Get away! Guards! Seize him! But there are no guards left. Sonic destroyed them all. Man, you're really slow on the uptake, aren't you? Let me catch you up to speed. Sonic revs up the spin dash and crashes into the command console, breaking it immediately. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm here to put all of your schemes into the ground. Just like I did with Robotnik earlier. Sonic looks at the ring in his hands as it starts to glow. Here goes nothing. Let's see what this can do. Sonic is reborn, feeling invincible. He runs all the way up round the giant smoking facility's generator and then spins straight through it, cutting meters of metal in half. This sets off a critical reaction. Explosions spilling out across all the pipework as the alarms start blurring throughout the entire chemical plant. What have you done? Sonic helps the Freedom Fighters up to their feet. You guys need to get out of here. This place is gonna blow. Who are you? Didn't you hear? I'm Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Now let's get out of here. Oh, 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 wait for me. The critters scamper off as Snively tries in vain to get a hold of this situation. Feeling bad for him, Sonic boosts over to Snively, flicks him on the nose and holds something up. I think you dropped this. As he speeds away, Snively looks down in his hand to see one of the Freedom Fighters' bombs. What? Sonic and the Freedom Fighters escaped in the submarine that they used to get in. And as they journey to their base of operations, they ask each other a bunch of questions. Sonic tells them that he was just passing through the area when he noticed Robotnik's pollution in Emerald Hill Zone. 
And from there, some of the locals directed him to this chemical plant in order to cause some damage. The Freedom Fighters, in turn, explained that they've been trying to form a resistance to overthrow Dr. Robotnik and free the Kingdom of Acorn, saying that the King was actually captured and held prisoner within the heart of Robotnik's empire, and so, and so they've been without solid leadership ever since. Sonic was surprised that all of this was going on at this part of the world, and said that he had no idea until he got here that any of this had happened, which isn't positive news for the Freedom Fighters, but on the bright side, Bunny points out that might mean that Robotnik hasn't got as far of a grip as they thought he did. Regardless, when they do surface, they find themselves in a serene location. Fresh, green, wild grass, ivies, blossoming trees, and crystal clear water, all with stone marble platforms. They are in the aquatic ruins zone. Man. What a peaceful place. Yeah, it's so quiet around here because Robotnik hasn't shown any interest in it. They explain that this place used to be the capital of the Kingdom of Acorn when it was first established, but that had moved to Mobotropolis many generations ago, and this place had since become ruins. But Sally proudly says, and it will be here that they will rebuild it all over again. And heads off, Antoine following beside her. Sonic asks Rota, where are they even going? And he smiles, saying that he'll see. And see, he will. After they traverse through some of the more hidden areas, they come across what seems to be a brackish pool. And the Freedom Fighters start wading through it. Ugh, water. Deep water. No thanks. Ah, what is the edge hogs afraid of? <laughs> Just afraid of a little splash. And Antoine teases as he jumps in. This getting on Sonic's nerves gives him enough encouragement to follow through. And once they cross to the other side, there's a large hollowed out tree trunk that they all roll through like a slide, spitting them out into a forested area completely hidden from the outside world. There are trees, yes, but also rudimentary huts and buildings. A couple other critters already roaming through and some run over to see how the Freedom Fighters have been doing. Whoa, what is this place? This is our own sweet nut hole. After everyone settles down, Sonic is introduced to what makes up the Freedom Fighting Force of Knot Hole. The secret place that Robotnik doesn't know about where they can try their best to organize what resistance they can muster. Lots of their tools are either stolen from Robotnik or heavily tampered with, and resources are scarce, but people make use with what they have, and everyone around here trusts each other. Sonic quickly becomes talk of the town after tales of his exploits in saving the Freedom Fighters at Chemical Plant spread through. People question if he really can run like the wind. And through all of this diplomacy, Sonic manages to inform them about Chuck and his desire to find other people willing to put up a fight. So they give Sonic some communication tools and he returns to Emerald Hill Zone, meets with Chuck and delivers the good news to him. Well, Sonny boy, this is the first good news I've had in a long while. Using this, we might be able to put something together. How was that ring, by the way? From then on, the Freedom Fighters and Chuck in Emerald Hill Zone with Sonic and Tails collaborate, finding moments to strike, people to free, and machines to destroy, gradually weakening Robotnik's hold on the Kingdom of Acorn. Snively is the one in charge of operations, as his master is off working on some undisclosed master plan. So Snively is the one who is to blame for their loss of territory bit by bit. Casino Night Zone, this gambling facilities destroyed, a source of revenue for Robotnik cancelled out. More villagers are freed, lowering the reinforcements of robotic slaves coming into their evil empire. And eventually, 
Snively is left with little choice but to update his master on the current situation. Robotnik hunches over his workbench, going over some blueprints and final plans as his door is knocked upon. Enter! The door slides open and the small, shrewd Snively slumps in. Robotnik, sir! I've come to report news on not all. Ah! You've destroyed them! Excellent! Very good news, Snively! Just what I wanted to hear! Now, nothing will stand in the way of my next plan! Yes, sir. It wouldn't be good news if that was what happened. What? What did you say? Oh, I... Out with it, Snively! The Freedom Fighters have taken back a lot of your controls, sir! Taken back! Taken back! Robotnik stops what he's doing and turns to face Snively, his eyes squinting, a scowl, a menace, his very body trembling with a growing rage. Snively shrinks. Well, sir, they've disrupted... Robotnik closes the distance between them and grabs Snively by the collar. I gave you one job, Snively! One job! And you failed me! Do you remember what I do to failures, dear nephew? No, sir! Robotnik grabs the back of Snively's head and presses it against glass. On the other side, a robotic bear and a robotic fox. They get through. Please, sir, it, it wasn't my fault. There was another member, a new one. He was fast. Fast? Was he a hedgehog? Yes, sir. How did you... Robotnik cut Snively off, frothing with anger. Hedgehog, that nuisance again. And he throws Snively away, crashing to the floor. The servant holds his neck as he gets up and looks at Robotnik in fear. But he doesn't look back, instead returning to his workbench. That pest is becoming a thorn in my side. He's trying to make a mockery of me. No one makes a mockery of me. It seems I'll have to put my latest work to test sooner than I had planned. He places his hand on a lever. I would say this will be a test run, but the hedgehog will meet his match. And he pulls it, opening a hatch in the floor. A tube raises out from the ground, large, tinted green glass, and inside of it a metallic figure. As the glass raises up, its eye activates. Ah, now this is a marvel of creation. When you awaken, kill him. Man, what is Robotnik cooking? Something deadly, I hope. This brings us to the end of today's episode. The Freedom Fighters have united with Sonic and together they've been able to make quite the dent into Robotnik's hold of the Kingdom of Acorn. But it seems things might be about to take a turn for the worst. How do you feel the story has progressed since last time? Is it going in a direction that you think is fitting? Or has this spun off in a place you weren't expecting? Do let me know in the comments down below. And just like last time, the future of this series really does depend on the engagement of you guys. So get your friends to watch it. Comment to see a part three. Let me know you want to see it. So I know you still want this to go on. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is the Mighty Emperor signing off.